Supporting multiple languages in your game is a great way to increase the reach of your game and increase player satisfaction. In my last video, I talked about game localization and how I think it's a good idea for most India games. If that video got you excited to localize your own game, you might now be wondering what languages should you actually translate the game to? I mean, there are 7000 languages in the world. Surely you don't need translations for all of them. Of course not. Just 6000 will do just fine. Well, no. There aren't actually too many languages you need to worry about and it might even be a good idea to just focus on a few key languages. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. In this video, I will first go through some of the existing wisdom related to supporting different languages in games and then I will show you what kind of an effect globalization had on my game. Mortal Glory is available in 12 languages, including English, so I will be taking a look at the sales data and seeing which of those languages had the biggest impact on my sales numbers. Hi, my name is Auro, I'm a solo India game developer and I'm the creator of a game called Mortal Glory. On top of that, I also make these weekly YouTube videos sharing my experiences to help you with your own game dev journey. Now, let's start with the topic. What languages should you translate your game to? The most common advice is to start with eFix. Huh? What language is that? eFix stands for English, French, Italian, German and Spanish. The reason for this advice is that these five languages are used in rich countries that have active gaming communities. Many of these countries also have habits of dubbing their entertainment content, so a lot of people are used to consuming content in their own language. These languages also use the same alphabet, and there are a lot of people proficient with translating these language pairs, so the translation prices are cheaper than with many other languages. After eFix, it's usually CJK that's recommended. That stands for Chinese, Japanese and Korean. These countries have massive gaming communities, but are not very proficient with English, so it makes sense to translate to those languages also. Different alphabets and cultural differences, along with the lower English proficiency, can lead to some issues though, and usually translating to these languages is more costly. You should also note that Chinese has two commonly used character sets, the traditional characters and then the simplified characters. These are two different ways to write the same language and are used in different parts of the world. Mainland China uses a simplified version, so that's the one you should go with if you're going by the numbers. After eFix and CJK, it's usually Russian and Brazilian Portuguese that are suggested due to their size and presence in the gaming communities. Those are pretty much all the ones that are commonly suggested. You can always add support for other languages also, but on average, they will most likely have a marginal impact compared to the ones I mentioned. One good general tactic for choosing languages could also be to take a look at the EF's English Proficiency Index and see which countries understand English the least. Then, find out how rich the people in that country are on average and whether or not they are into playing games. With your localization efforts, you ideally want to target countries that have a combination of low proficiency of English but have a lot of people who love to play games and have enough disposable income to buy those games. Some countries also have different tendencies when it comes to the language that the media is consumed in. For example, many Middle European countries have habits of dubbing their entertainment content, but in Scandinavian countries, many players prefer the English versions of games even if their own language is supported. Additionally, you should consider what type of a game you are selling. Some countries might have an active gaming community, but it's heavily focused on mobile gaming or some specific console. In this scenario, that active gaming community won't do much good for you if your game is only available for PC. Likewise, some countries might have a gaming community that is super into sports games, but might not understand the appeal of your visual novel RPG hybrid. Or maybe your game has some elements that are very hard to understand in some cultures. 
there are a lot of things you can take into consideration when honing your localization strategy, but there's no need to get overwhelmed by it. You don't need to think about it that much if you don't want to. It's perfectly okay to go with just the most popular languages. You will most likely do just fine by doing that. You also don't need to translate to all the languages I mentioned, but it might be a bit hard to pick and choose which ones you want to prioritize out of those. The common advice is to start with efix, but is that valid in all cases? I have an opinion on that, but let's save it to the end of the video. Mortal Glory is available in 12 languages. All the ones I mentioned earlier, plus Finnish and Polish. Maybe you're interested in seeing what kind of an impact they had on my sales. My numbers are just one example and they won't give the objective truth, but they do give some indication what kind of results you might get with your own localization efforts and what languages you should focus on. Alright, let's first take a look at what my regional sales look like before the localization. Okay, so United States is dominating the list with UK and Canada coming in after as the other English-speaking countries. After those, there's Germany, which has a high proficiency in English, and then Australia again as an English-speaking country. After that, we have a few countries with very high English proficiency. Finland is probably a bit higher than normal, as I am from Finland myself. Then we have China, which is the first country on the list that is not very high in English proficiency. But China is the second most used language on Steam, so I think that explains why it's up there. After China, we again have some European countries. At this point of the list, we are talking only about 1% of the unit sales per country, so the numbers are getting quite low. Looking at such low numbers makes me feel sad, so why don't we move on to what it looks like after the localization update. I will include in the data all the sales after release up to this date, so this includes all the sales before and after the localization update. Alright, the United States is still leading the race, but not by such a huge margin anymore. China has now jumped all the way from 9th place to the 2nd place on the list, with 24% of all the units sold. That's quite a dramatic change. Of course, if you look closely, you will notice that while China accounts for 24% of units sold, it only accounts for 16% of total revenue. This is because the game is listed at a lower price in China. But 16% of the total revenue is still a very big sum. Then after China, we have the UK, Germany and Australia still high on the list, but with lower percentages. It would seem that the German translation didn't have an effect on the sales from Germany, but it's hard to say if it would now be at a lower place without the translation. But then we have a surprise contestant on the list. Japan. Before the localization, Japan was sitting on the 23rd place with minimum sales rounding to 0%. Now, after the update, it's at 5%. That's a very nice increase, but after that, the list looks very similar to what it was before. Maybe South Korea is worth mentioning, as it was on the 30th place before, and now it's at 11th place. But still, it only accounts to 1% of the revenue. The numbers with many of these are so low, that it's hard to say if the localization had an effect or not. I'm confident that it did have an effect, but how much? Maybe there's some more accurate way to look at this data, but I feel like looking at the positions like this should be accurate enough. Maybe let's take a quick look at the data only after the localization update. We can clearly see the difference in numbers as now China leads in units sold and is very close also in revenue. Japan has also overtaken the UK, Germany and Canada to settle on the third place. But otherwise it doesn't look too different from before. But with this view of the data, I have to comment that I think it's a bit skewed as many of the interested English players already bought the game on release, so it's natural their numbers would be a bit lower after the localization update. But still, it does verify the effectiveness of the Chinese and Japanese localization for my game. Then, if I also look at the last three months, we can see where the new sales are mostly coming from. It looks very similar to the last view. Chinese and Japanese were clearly the best value language translations for me. Now that we have looked at the data, let's go back to the original question. What languages should you localize your game to? If the cost factor is not budget breaking, I would go with 
efix, cjk, russian and brazilian portuguese. In my case, some of the translations might not have been worth the time and money individually if we are looking just at their placement on my sales list, but I got most of them for a low price at the same time as I was adding the other languages, so I wouldn't leave them out even if I could go back in time. I think there's also some variance involved in which languages end up affecting the sales, so the situation might be different for my next game. But if you are tight on money, then I would definitely prioritize the CJK part first, starting with Chinese. At least in my case, there's no doubt at all that the Chinese localization was by far the most profitable one. But hey, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you found the subject interesting and let me know if there was some aspect of this topic that you would have liked to hear more about. In my next video, I'm thinking of showing what the localization actually looks like in practice. So look forward to that. Alright. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.